This is our second cutting, and just like we predicted, it is a failure again. Yep. We had some problems happen, and stay tuned in the video if you want to see just what happened this yep. time. So this is why we think you shouldn't grow hay if you have a small farm. We are with our second cutting of hay for the year. And it's a failure, again. Just as we predicted, there was going to be an issue. So this, this cutting, we had, had a neighbor who does custom hay cutting come over, and the deal is that he cuts, cuts it, veils it, and he takes half, which is fine. But he got here kind of late because he's busy, which I understand. I don't blame him. The alfalfa was flowering out real bad. But, you know, we're beggars, so we can't be choosers. So we just let him do it whenever he could get to it. Yeah. But uh, he borrowed our mower because he had his uh, swather in the other part of the valley. And it, would, it would be easier just for him to use our mower, which is fine. And he came up with a new used tractor that he bought and cut most of it. And towards the end, his PTO broke, just like our PTO broke on our first cutting. So he cut it, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Right after we cut it, we got half inch rain and then continuously just kept raining mm -hmm. uh, not predicted rain just kept coming and so now it's just brown and looks like garbage it looks terrible around here small square bales sell for about six to eight bucks a piece and we usually get 200 bales off our irrigated fields here and this stuff is probably not in that six to eight dollar range i would say i don't know what we'll be able to sell it for so this video is all about how our opinion is that for a small farm, growing a hay field that you have to irrigate does not pencil out. We will not make any money off this field for years. If at some point it becomes profitable, that will be amazing. But if you are trying to start a small hay field and you're starting from scratch and you have to irrigate it, and then you have to think about how you're going to cut it and all of that, either have someone do it or get all the equipment yourself, it just does not pencil out to make any profit. You got to put the well in mm -hmm. and a pump. And then all the PVC or however you're going to deliver the water. Then you're going to buy your equipment for delivering the water, which would be like a wheel line or hand line or, you know, whatever other apparatus. Sort of sprinkler, K-Pod, something. Yep. And then uh, seed. For us, this is about five acres, four or five acres of yeah. field here. And that costs $700 worth of alfalfa seed, which all got winter killed last winter. Yep. Two years into it. And then you have to pay the, yeah, two years into it. Then you have to pay the electric bill, of course, to pump the water up. Um, all of this equipment is like big, heavy equipment that is not cheap. It's, it costs a lot of money to buy all that big pipe to run the water through. It's, it's expensive stuff. And then if you get around to actually growing the hay and spending all the time, also the time moving all the water, moving the water. It's a daily chore. A daily chore. How often do you mow water? I move it at night, and then I turn it and kick it on, and then in the morning I run out and shut it off so it sits during the day and drains, mm -hmm. and then go out every night and move it. So. Although when we first started the field and we had little tiny baby alfalfa plants out here, you were doing it twice a day. Yeah, it was it was yeah. drought, hot and dry, and I was trying to keep it all alive, yep. so I had to move it a lot. Yep, and we had good alfalfa then, but then we got winter kill, and then we had to reseed to to just more grass is what we decided to do this year. One thing that I guess we need to realize or rationalize is uh, like if we didn't grow hay here, what would we do with all this ground? Because it's mm -hmm. pretty good size for just leaving vacant and not putting water on it. And when we moved here, there was just dirt and weeds and that's all there would be here unless you did something with it. So, I mean, it does look very nice. It is nice to have and it's practical like for animals and stuff. Like that makes sense. But the financial aspect of it it doesn't make sense if you just want to sell this. If we get 200 bales off of these fields and then we split them in half now since somebody else is baling our hay and they're taking half, it just doesn't make any sense economically for us to do this. Yet we're kind of in this point where we want to have this green. We want to have this growing and be able to provide food rather than provide nothing, food for animals, and then in tune food for people, depending on what kind of animals this feeds. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't make sense. And you might say, well, if you own, own equipment, you won't have to split it. We do have our own equipment. It's old, just like the guy that is cutting our, our hay now. He, he has old equipment too. But yeah. running old equipment, things break. And every time it breaks, it's expensive. The parts are expensive. They're hard to find. Mm -hmm. And almost every cutting I've ever done, I've had to wrench on something. Yep. So, and then you also think about the expense to get all the equipment. So, 
tractor, however much that's going to cost, thousands of dollars. We spent $5,000 on our 1980s Kubota tractor. Yeah, and that was kind of a good deal, really. Yeah. $2,500 probably for an old swather like we have. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what we did. We, got a, we bought our baler on auction and then did a ton of work to it to get it mm -hmm. running. And we spent $1,000 on it, but, you know, it's probably maybe worth two grand now, I guess. Yeah. Since it's working. But every time something breaks, though, it's another $300 part, maybe. And you just have to bite the bullet and buy it and for it to continue trying to use it. And, I mean, if you think about a $300 part and we're getting 200 bales of hay, and that's before even counting watering or even putting the power into water, it just does not make any sense. Yeah, we spent $200 in electric to get this crop to where it is mm -hmm. now, which is virtually, <laughs> virtually useless and, yeah. and not going to make us any money back. So yeah. just that part alone is kind of a hard pill to swallow. So here is the neighbor's tractor that is currently broken down and sitting here. Just like our PTO is stuck in high gear in our barn, this one's sitting here needing a fix. And that's not an easy job. It's not something you can just work on the outside. Usually you have to split the tractor in half and get in the internals and the transmission and whatnot. Or God knows what that entails. I don't even want to think about it. So that's why I didn't tear into ours while our hay was on the ground because it was just like yeah, way too big of a job, big job to get it done in time to actually make it work. Mm -hmm. It's like a wintertime job for me to do it when we're slow around here. Mm -hmm. So anyways, now we're at a point where we're thinking, okay, we want to use the ground to do something. Um, the hay, alfalfa field, not really working out as far as financially. It doesn't make any sense. Um, we kind of thought it would be like set it and forget it is kind of what we thought. But after getting winter kill and all the alfalfa died and then weeds filled in, it just it's not set it and forget it. And especially, daily, daily chore of yeah. moving. Moving and maintaining the irrigation is really anno annoying, too. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we continue with a portion of the field, it will be established enough and those roots will be deep enough down for things to continue to grow. That was kind of like our thought when we put that in. Um, and to have an, a pasture somewhere on the property just in case we needed it. But anyways, we're thinking of kind of pivoting and doing more produce. We, we love growing produce, and we always say we're not going to bite off more garden projects, but that's kind of what we want to do now. We're thinking of maybe putting in a hoop house or maybe just doing a bigger cornfield, like the cornfield right to the side of me, it has made us way more money than anything in this hay field is going to make us this year. Um, so it just kind of helps cover the cost of all the other projects that come up. And just thinking about everything that comes up, this hay field is a money suck. Yeah. If you need hay, you know, and you want to raise hay, I would recommend just buying it from somebody who's got a big setup with new equipment because they can do it a lot more effectively and efficiently than I can or most people can because, I mean, even the guy that's doing custom hay is broke down right now. Yeah, that's a kind of a good thing to kind of, I don't know, think about is even the guy who does it for a job, for a side job, his isn't working. We're thinking about doing some sort of a drip system and getting a weed mat layer for the three-point on our tractor for next year. That's kind of what we're thinking about. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas, Please leave them in the comments. It would be great to hear from you. So all of what we're saying might not apply to you if you're somewhere where it rains a lot and you don't need to set up irrigation and you don't need to think about that whole aspect because that part is part that has really just, like, put us in the hole from the beginning. Um, if you just had to worry about how to get it bailed up, maybe it makes a lot of sense for you. Or maybe if you don't have to water it and you don't have to pay that electric bill, maybe it makes a ton of sense for you to just split it with somebody for them to come bail it. Or maybe you have like connections otherwise and it makes sense for you but in our situation it just doesn't make sense or if you enjoy wrenching on old equipment yeah. and are mechanically inclined this is right up your alley man just get after it it'll it won't disappoint you'll have plenty <laughs> of wrenching to do <laughs> and then you could come fix our stuff yeah so best case scenario we get about 200 bales off of our irrigated fields here per cutting and if you pencil it out at six bucks a bale, that's... Because our hay isn't the best of quality this year is why we would go with that lower number. Yeah, it's kind of it's probably pretty average anyway. Um, 70 pound bales, that's 1200 bucks per cutting. And if we have to split it, that's 600 bucks for us and 600 bucks for the guy that's cutting it for us. And our electric bill's 200 bucks. So that's... Yeah. $400 for me for, for a nightly chore that I have to do and morning chore mm -hmm. of moving water. Plus We're, that was one electric bill he's yeah. talking about, not all of the electric bills yeah. to get to that point. And that doesn't count the startup fee in the electric bill at the beginning the, of the season. Yeah, the massive debt we 
we started out, you know, we're way in the red as far as equipment yeah. goes. So And that doesn't count our two tractor fixes that, well, the PTO that you have to fix, that's going to cost money, and so is the... Drive arm on the mower that we fixed for $300 part. Yeah, so therefore we are in the red already without even this being bailed or sold. At, a decent, the at a decent quality. This is just mm -hmm. terrible quality, too. So we're yeah. digging a bigger hole already. Yep. We talked a lot in our first cutting video about how many different ways we have put money into this field from the past to kind of get us to this point where we're like so close. We almost have everything we need to grow and cut and bale our own hay, but things keep breaking and keep getting messed up. And um, if you want to reference that video, I will put it somewhere on the screen right here so that you can see just how many, how much money we put into other things and kind of what happened during that first cutting because, of course, it was a little bit of a failure that we mentioned earlier. Well, some good news and some bad news followed. The good news is that the field got raked and baled without any additional rain. Also, the neighbor who cut, raked, and baled the hay let us keep all of the hay because he had borrowed our hay rig all summer to work on other projects. So that was really great news and we were definitely really grateful that the deal worked out for both of us. Now on the other hand, the bad news was that we got way less than our estimated 200 bales of hay. We ended up with closer to 100 bales. This was probably due to that alfalfa that experienced winter kill. The next bit of bad news was that due to the horrible quality of this hay Green in there. because it had been rained on, we were only able to sell this hay for $3 a bale and we sold it as cow hay. Definitely not worth the time, energy, effort, and attention we've given this field to get it to the point that it is at. Now, even with all of that said, we will probably still press on with a portion of the field because using the land for something is better than nothing in our eyes. We just wanted to share just how much goes into a bale of hay and how at this point we have not experienced any profit when all expenses are considered for growing a small hay field. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this interesting, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.